probably the most useful tools that you're going to find are these ones at the top, localhost, phpMyAdmin, and the www directory. Now, why is that? Well, the www directory, if you click on that, takes you right to the folder. You may remember in a previous video, I talked about creating content management system based websites with Joomla or Drupal or WordPress or something like that. And to do that, you need to have your access to your web directory. So I showed a graphic that looked like this, and it shows that you need a web server, let's say Apache in this case. You're going to need your web directory, and in this directory is where you're going to put your websites in their own directories or their own folders. So this directory is your web directory. Notice it says I'm in the C drive, I'm in the WAMP folder, and I'm also in the www folder, right? So if I go to uh, WAMP, you can see these are all of the folders inside of the WAMP installation. The www folder is where you're going to put your web pages. So for instance, this is right now my home page, index.php. Okay? And so this directory is important. So this is where you're going to put your websites. So for instance, I'm going to put a, maybe a folder called site one. That would be where I put my first website. And I could put another folder, site two, right, et cetera, et cetera. So this is very useful because all you have to do is just go here to your web server, go straight to www directory, and you get right there. Also, this top one, localhost, will open up a web browser and take you. You'll see that it opens up my home page you can see localhost this is actually accessing the web page that's running on my web server right now locally so for instance if I go back to that page that we had in the www directory this page right here index.php this is what the page looks like in the web browser going through the web server you can see here it says WAMP server and it shows you your server configuration the version of Apache PHP extensions that are lo uh, loaded, all of that. So anyway, once again, this is how you could get there. Now, there's other ways to get there. You could also type in 127.0.0.1, which is your loopback address, and notice it takes me to the same place, to my own web server running on my own computer. Or I could also open up a command prompt, let's say, go to start, put in, let's say, CMD, right for command prompt and here you get a command prompt and then type in IP config to find out what your private IP address is on your local network you can see mine right now is 192.168.2.103 and if I put that in here 192.168.2.103 I also get the web page showing up or in this case I don't and it says it's forbidden. Okay, so let's see here, more information. It says that it does not have permission to view this file. So that's interesting. I put in my own IP address, 192.168.2.103. I should see this page right here, the WAMP server homepage, right? Let's try something out. I'm going to go down to the WAMP server and I'll say put online and now I'll hit refresh and now I can see the web page. So now that means somebody from another computer could put in my IP address and get to the web page. Alright, perfect. So three ways of getting to view your own web folder and your own websites is putting in localhost into the URL in the browser window. You could also put in 127.0.0.1 or you could put in your IP address if you know what it is and find out what it is first by opening up a command prompt and issuing an IP config command like this. Now, if you can't bring up this home page, you can't get localhost to return the WAMP server configuration home page like this, which is what you should receive with the WAMP server running, then you've got some problems. So here's a couple things to check. If you turn off all of the services on the WAMP server so it's completely red and then exit out of it or uninstall WAMP server completely you shouldn't be seeing any MySQL or Apache processes running on your computer. In other words 
if you right click and go to the task manager you can see here I've got processes here and under processes if I scroll down to M there's the MySQL daemon running well it's running because I'm running it right now right the WAMP server is running also if I go to services and I go down to W you'll see there is the WAMP Apache, that's the Apache web server, and the MySQL daemon also showing up under services. So they're both running on my system right now. But if I turn them off, I shut them down, right? And let's say click on this and stop them, and then right click on exit the program, or let's say I uninstall WAMP server completely, you should not see any MySQL or Apache processes or services running on your system. Now, if you do have them running, then that might be part of the problem. Possibly you have Apache or MySQL already installed and running on your system, and now you're trying to install WAMP server on top of that, and there's going to be a conflict on the port numbers that they operate on. Another thing to check for if localhost is not working, and let's say you have all, let's say, green on your WAMP server and you can't get localhost to work, is maybe your host file. Your host file resolves um, host addresses to IP addresses on your system. So how do you get to your host file to check to make sure your host file is correct? Well, you'll need to open up Notepad, and you're going to need to right-click on Notepad and open it up as with administrative privileges. So here I run Notepad with administrative privileges, and then I can go to File Open, and you can see if you go to your C drive, Windows, System32, Drivers, and then the ETC folder, and then change the document that you're looking from from .txt to All Files, you'll find your host file. Now your host file should look something like this. All of these lines are commented out because they start with a pound sign, so they don't really count. These are comments, right? Um, basically instructions. And then this line counts because it starts with a 127, and so does this, and so does this line and this line. And you can see this line says localhost, which will resolve to 127.0.0.1. So you should see a line either like this or like this on your system, which tells the system how to resolve the name localhost. Typically, names are resolved on your computer. In other words, when you put a name in your web browser, for instance, let's say I put in danscourses.com in here, what service resolves that is your DNS settings, your domain name server settings. That resolves the name to the IP address. But in the case of localhost, it's your host file that is doing the resolving, not the DNS server. Localhost is being resolved by your host file prior to DNS services trying to resolve it. So your host file is prior to your DNS server and if you don't have an entry like this in here that's possibly why, that's one reason why maybe it's not working. So you want to check that, type in localhost, hit tab and then put 127.0.0.1, save the file. You will not be able to save it if you haven't opened up the file with administrative privileges. Okay, so that's another troubleshooting technique. Now, the last thing I wanted to point out was under these very important files that run under WAMP server, localhost, which takes you to your home page on your website, phpMyAdmin is the next one that I want to talk about. phpMyAdmin opens up a PHP programmed interface to um, manage and work with your MySQL server. So it opens up a, a interface like this and it automatically logs you into the PHP MyAdmin server because there's no password on the MySQL server. Remember, the user for the MySQL server is root and there's no password, so instantly we're logged in. And in here you can create databases. So you can see here Go, let's say I'm in home already, I can go to databases, and I can put in the name of my first database, let's say site1 underscore db, and hit create, and you can see it just created site1db. Now if I click on this, 
I've got the database, it's ready to go. There are no tables in the database, there's no information in the database yet, but this, the database has been created and the user is root and there's no password. And root of course has all privileges to this database. So that makes sense. So now we've talked about how we need to have Apache, we need our web directory where we're going to put our sites, we need to also have PHP, which we do, and we need a MySQL server because ultimately we're going to need to make databases to correspond with our Joomla websites or our WordPress websites that we're going to be creating. So now you have the basics, you know that you can get to from WAMP server very easily to test your site, localhost, you can get to PHP my admin to create your databases, and you can jump very quickly to your www directory inside your Apache web server by just using that link right there.